10, 10, yay! We are at episode 10, everybody. This is Melissa Del Toro Schaffner, and welcome to our series called Stories from the Heart, where I am seeking to empower you and motivate you and give you stories from my life that will demonstrate different lessons about the things we learn in life and where places where we can get better and muscles that we can build to get even stronger than you were yesterday. You'll love what you hear. You'll love what you hear. And today I wanna to talk to you about initiative. So if you recall in episode nine, we talked a little bit about creating opportunity for ourselves. And when we look out there in the workscape or the manscape or whatever scape that you're looking for opportunities in, and you don't see what you're looking for, not to say that you can actually create a person, but you can create your own opportunities. You can choose to see what you want to see. Uh, it doesn't have to be what every, everyone else sees, and that's okay because you actually are creating your reality. Now, that's not to say that things aren't happening around you. There are issues happening in the world. There are uh, forces at work. There are tragedies. There are bad things, viruses. There are you know, stupid people, <laughs> smart people, all different kinds of people out there giving you all kinds of information. But ultimately, what we focus on is what grows in our lives and what keeps us um, in the place that we are is no judgment. It just, it just is how it is. It's not good, it's not bad. But today, about taking initiative. So I was living in Harrisburg, and as you recall, I was getting my MBA at Penn State University, and it just wasn't working for me. I don't know if you've ever had that, but I felt like I was in a life that was like one, like a t-shirt that's one size too small, or maybe two sizes too small. Like you love this t-shirt, but it's just too small. And unless I shrank my body or, or my mind, myself, to fit into that t-shirt, it, it just doesn't fit. So I decided to take initiative and uh, start applying to different schools all over the country for my MBA. So I applied to George Washington University, I applied to Pepperdine University, and I applied to Seattle Pacific University. And Seattle is far away. My mom was not too pleased because she was in Pittsburgh at the time and later in Florida. So we couldn't have been further apart. But, or, or this way, depending on which, <laughs> which way you look at it. Um, but I took the initiative. I applied to the schools. I actually got accepted to all three. But because of where I was in my life at the time, I chose Seattle Pacific University. And what did that mean? Well... That meant, basically, that I had to sell everything that I owned, which wasn't much because I was in my parents' house for a while, and then I was in Harrisburg, and I didn't have very much. But I sold everything that I owned for the first time in my life, and I moved to Seattle, to cross-country Seattle, all the way to Seattle, and uh, spent the next 10 years there. So there's a lot of the stories to come uh, occurred in Seattle. But a lot of people ask me, like, wow, how could you? I was 20, 25 years old. I moved across the country. That's a pretty big move for a lot of people. I lived there. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any family there. I just went to the school, and I just started life there. Here is the, um, the trick on picking up and starting new, taking initiative, picking up and starting new. Every place you go, no matter whether it's a different neighborhood, a different state, or a different country, you're going to be able to find your people. You're going to be able to find your favorite grocery store. You're going to be able to find your favorite gas station or your favorite you know, local vendor, your favorite coffee shop. You're going to be able to begin the seeds of your new life. So never be afraid to begin the seeds of a new life because guess what? If you want to, you can always go, go back to, your, to the old place where you were. It won't be the same because you will have changed and probably everyone around you, but you can always go back to a place where you were. But taking the initiative to design your life and actually move forward and being courageous enough to sell everything that's not, you know, that's not memories like photos and things like that. But to get rid of all of those things is a very empowering sort of super hyper Marie Kondo kind of thing to do. 
because at this point in my life, when I'm speaking to you, I have sold everything I owned probably about maybe five or six times. And I will tell you that I don't miss any of it because I kept what was most important. I have all the photos. I have clothes that were meaningful to me. I have blankets that you know I brought with me out of my childhood home. So the things that are really important, I still have in my life. And the rest of it, you can always rebuild. So that's the empowerment, the motivation, the comfort for you today is that even if you lose everything, you can always start again as long as you have your life. So take good care of your life, take care of your health, take care of your mental health, and everything will follow in suit. So have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoy my 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 dress, my nice dress. Um, it is a celebration, an occasion to dress up for whenever you show up for your own life and you show up in a positive, powerful, and brilliant way. So keep doing that. Stay motivated. Check out my other videos if you're interested in uh, the backstory of all that. And I'm really looking forward to continue, continuing the journey with you as we move forward in the series um, the next time. Thanks again. Bye. You'll love what you hear. You'll love what you hear.